just start. Okay. Good evening, everyone. We are here with another show of raw wisdom where we bring the people of real world who have risen above the average. And today we have a very, very special guest, a special guest in the form of he's called an Indian Romeo because he will you will find him actually running on the beach. You will uh, also find him uh, probably doing a gym. You will find him sleeping and giving instruction to his team. You will find him uh, probably uh, doing a Ritik Roshan steps and so on. So you will find him everywhere and still he ensures that he gives value to the his audience and his client base on a daily basis who has been so consistent in his video making, in his brand building that he is now synonymous to Gary Vee of India. So let me welcome our special guest for today Digital Pratik. I don't know why I call it Digital Pratik, but his name is Pratik. Come on. Okay, let me welcome Digital Pratik. Pratik, thank you very much for coming on the show of Raw Wisdom. And I, I really, really thankful for you to get this call book just in five minutes time, <laughs> as far as I remember. And uh, uh, that is the beauty of simplicity and the practicality that you see it. And today when we talk about how do we probably cover it, right? The the media coverage for this show was like digital business mentor meets the digital brand strategist. That is how it was done. So I want to make sure that you get the maximum coverage on the digital brand strategist. So let me start with actually converted into digital Pratik. I, I, Rakesh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I lost the question. But yeah, b before I ask you once again the question, first, let me just thank you for the wonderful welcome, uh, for the wonderful introduction which you had. Like that introduction, for the first of all time, I'm hearing some kind of introduction, like the Indian Romeo is the Jordan <laughs> and all those things. Thank you so much. It, it clearly shows what kind of uh, research, uh, though for a little bit research for the intro part you have done, and it clubs uh, the entire uh, uh, practicality which I practice in every single form, shape or form. And uh, it clearly signifies that I'm, I'm living actually a niche which is called as life for myself. And I'm so glad to hear that as an intro for myself for the first of all time on planet Earth. So thank you so much. I'll remember this moment mm -hmm. as an introduction which Rakesh made on his show. And I, I'll just send it to my team. Definitely we have to use this kind of introduction for myself. So yeah, thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for all the kind words and uh, the term Gary Vee and everything uh, means a lot. Uh, grateful for that introduction. And uh, yeah, let's let's move on. I'm just super excited to deliver some value bombs with respect to digital branding, personal branding, and strategies which I'm working in the now, which I'm personally practicing for my clients, for my brand, and everything. So yeah, Rakesh, um, I'm super excited. Absolutely, thank you very much. And uh, uh, let me give you a, a little bit of questions in that case. That what made Pratik Singh to convert into digital Pratik? while you have mentioned in a very beautiful way on your website, probably suggested each and every incident that people are just reading a movie and saying, oh my goodness, what is this guy doing? Three times fail or drop out in the engineering college. Who will drop out for three times? <laughs> and that has brought me to this question. What has transformed in you during those period 2009 onwards to 2018 when there was a rebirth which happened as a digital Pratik. So what has transformed? Uh, honestly, uh, see, well, the time when I took that drop, obviously uh, it's mentioned on my website, but just to summarize for uh, the audience over here and to contextualize my talk over here, the first drop was actually because of my dad's paralytic stroke. He got a paralytic stroke. Yes. Uh, and It was the time for me to appear for the sixth semester examination, which I couldn't. So because in the engineering system at that point in time, I don't know the current system, but at that point in time, it was a system that even semester, if you have not cleared that, you cannot sit for the next even semester. So that's how the drop thing happened for the first of a time. So in which way I was able to sit on the seventh semester, but then slowly and steadily, eventually, uh, I had to uh, support my family as well, because now nobody was earning at that point in time. 
I had to take the responsibility. Uh, that's where uh, I started asking my friends that uh, how can I make money? And at that point in time, digital marketing was not that fancy, right? So people, if, right now, if somebody asks how to make money, they will say, okay, fine, start doing something online. But at that point in time, when I asked my friends, they told me there is something known as call center jobs where they don't require a degree. If you have, there is an additional bonus advantage with respect to your salary. But if you don't still have, you can walk in for the interviews. That's what I did. I borrowed formals from my friends. I walked in for an interview. I cracked somehow the interview. But then moving further in the call center journey, which happened from 2010 to 2014, all the mentors which I came across in the call center journey, uh, there is a term known as shadowing somebody. Yes. So you, you shadow your mentors who are actually on the floor while you are in the training period. Mm -hmm. So I was shadowing a couple of people. And I remember in Vodafone UK process, the international domain where I was working as a call center guy, uh, there was a three months training. And in one of the training, uh, Salim Bhai, I, Salim or Sami, Salim Bhai, yeah. Salim Bhai ek bande the, and he told me that Pratik, whatever you do, just make sure your NPS is good net promoter score. And then I started researching on NPS. What do I mean by that? And how can I do that score? Well, NPS net promoter score. Then I realized only if I satisfy the clients, which I'm chatting, nice. it was a chat process. It was not a verbal process. So I have to be very careful with the emotions I throw with my words in the chat, because talking with somebody, you can clearly express mm -hmm. your feelings and emotions in the words. It is very difficult. So that's how I started training myself that yes, I have to do something which expresses my emotions through words. So now when I'm self auditing right at this second as well, I was clearly trying to connect with my audience yes. or my visitors or something in any shape or form in my job journey. I was trying to connect with my audience with some kind of emotions and it was contextual mm -hmm. with the present, right? So that was something which I have evolved into. And luckily, fortunately, I actually beat Salim Bhai in the first month itself with the NPS. And he was like, Saleh, you beat Guru Dakshina, you beat me. Right? <laughs> and that was the golden moment for me. And that's where I realized that just blindly follow your mentors in a specific period of time and see if that tactics and strategies which you learn from a mentor work for you or not. It is not necessary that it will always work for you. 100%. But when, when you have no clue about something, and if you see that some person is already there, which you want to, then blindly close your eyes and walk on that path with all your mehnat, which with all your more work, hard work, smart work, whatever you want to call. 100%. And deliver 5x to 10x times more value with respect to what you are getting paid for. So I remember my salary at that point in time was 12,000 rupees in that process. Right. And uh, Salim Bhai told me that deliver as if you are getting an incentive of 50,000 rupees. Right. Wow. So that's how I have been trained. Like it is giving more, giving more, even before Gary Vaynerchuk came in my life. Then I was always listening to Bob Proctor's paradigm shift and all the secret came into picture. I was doing side hustle in the Amway at that point in time, somebody in that call center told me that there is a network marketing concept. I'm like, what is that? So I have no clue about what I was doing, but I was just blindly going and testing and experiencing new, new things. And that probably became my tagline over these years, learn, apply, share. So the, the thing to answer your question, like from what changed from Pratik Singh to digital Pratik is this one thing. I have always tried to learn something new in my life with respect to my life, my macro niche. And I always try to apply that something which I have learned in my life in that very same day. And That's then over a period of time, I keep on sharing them with my community, with some friends, family or whatever, which I have personally learned and applied. I don't read and then share. I first learn and apply and then I share. That's something which I have been doing consistently. That's that's wonderful way to do it. And I think everybody that I have come across as a mentor and uh, followed them, they all have the same fundamental principle of learning, applying and sharing. And that's where uh, the philosophy of giving and receiving, yep. first give, then to receive is coming in the play. And what I also realized that during this entire transformation that you have gone through while you got in touch with Gary V or other people, uh, I see your life has evolved from being a boy who was first surviving for the parents and so on to making a mark. That means 
not only you are creating your brand in a very strategic way may not be in your mind that way but uh definitely that you have made your name to a certain extent where people now know you and people love to talk to you on a different different way what i have realized though in the today's world where the digital age which was unlike your uh start right in 2009 today's digital age is completely different and i see it as an opportunity for a lot of people but at the same time a lot of people are very hesitant it so what's your view in terms of digital branding per se digital media branding today and why why do you feel it so critical i don't see it any different like if we talk about 2009 10 somebody told me that uh, i mean I, nobody told sorry i saw a banner mm -hmm. from this uh, 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 some kind of company and it was written how to make additional 5000 now being a 12000 rupees per month salary guy if i am seeing that okay fine i can earn an additional 3 and a half lakh rupees per month i am like oh wow i have to do it so the prop so so i'm not the problem i would say there is no difference if we talk about 2010 or 2021 right now people are getting fantasized by new ways of making money agree and they jump into that and then they have the mindset that okay fine ratu rat lakpati karodpati correct that mindset is getting into problem and even i was into that mm -hmm. right because of which i clicked on that i thought i would be making money but then i realized okay fine it's a loophole you have to now invest 25 dollars additionally you have to invest 500 dollars additionally so i didn't have that business mindset of investing money i had just an employee mindset of just making more money that's where i failed miserably so i couldn't make that much money in the first month itself but now i can 10x times more as compared to what i saw in 2020 or uh, 2010 right so that's the thing which i tell people that whether it is 2010 or 2021 focus on what is working right now and then first jump into that as a business mindset of you investing money if you take a let's suppose right now courses are selling like crazy every gali nukkad has an expert for something right and every gali nukkad has a course to sell so even if you take a course that course is not going to make an impact in your life unless you execute with respect to some tools some ads some marketing strategies you investing money and then trying to sell it 100% it's like you going to an iim or iits back in those days of 2010 all i had a dream was to finish my bachelor's before my dad got a paralytic stroke all right i'm talking about that I was a scholar student. I scored eighty-eight percentage, ninety-four in physics, ninety-three in maths. So I was a good student. I loved those subjects. But the problem was, I always has had, had a mind that once I finish the bachelor's, I'll do MBA. Mm. And my target was to crack CAT and get into IIMs, Nothing which never happened for me. <laughs> exactly. So the 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 critical part which everyone goes through is they get fantasized by seeing somebody else doing something. Okay. They don't take that as an inspirational path and then walking on that path unique way, uniquely. In a unique way, you have to walk, right? Like people people when they say me, a lot of times people ask me that uh, you are doing something which is working in the now, but you are also trying to copy Gary V. I'm like try to do that. try to copy gary v for next 90 days and then come to me <laughs> it's not an easy task 100% not all right and when i'm walking on my mentor's path i am walking it in a unique way 100%. people call me digital pratik not pratik singh chodasma agree you introduced me digital pratik not pratik singh chodasma so that brand impact making a brand digital branding everything has worked since past couple of years so right now people who want to jump into this the critical point is the number one thing is they have to be consistent for the next 5 years and not worry about how they will boom on youtube if they are starting youtube they have to think how they will get experience of the horizontal video format so that tomorrow if some new platform comes they have that leverage they have that experience and they can jump on that the same way i did i did periscope vertical i did snapchat vertical i did instagram stories vertical that's where i boomed on tiktok all of a sudden with million followers agree and and you touch upon a very unique thing which i 
I generally <clears throat> propose when I talk about my my target audience where I call it as a build a business around your USP. That is your unique strategic power and not something which you borrow from somebody. So yep. every one of us have that already inbuilt. It is just about discovering that and inculcating that business mindset which you always prefer, right? What I am also experiencing in the current uh, trend, right? The people are actually affected by more of an SOS syndrome, that is shiny object syndrome more than the pandemic, that is a coronavirus, I would say. Yep. And uh, they want to actually achieve that within that CC zone, what we call as a comfort and convenience zone. So they want to sit at their home, do the family work life balance, and then they want to achieve it. How do you see that as a, an attitude or a, I would say the roadblock to building the brand? Because let's talk about completely towards that branding strategic perspective. Like you are a practitioner that your life itself is a kind of a brand strategy. So. How do you see and what advice would you give to somebody like who is just playing in that CC zone and want to achieve something? Mm. And you always play one word that patience, 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 right? And that is what you, you want to bring in. So yes. how do you advise that person? So I was actually, I'm, I'm actually, yep. So I was, while we were talking, I was searching for something because today morning only, mm -hmm. uh, if you see, 22nd January 2021, 8 a.m. Yes. All right. Today morning itself. Uh, so I have a habit of jotting down my thoughts all the time. People think that I don't write. I write a lot. If somebody uh, somebody st uh, steals my phone, the, uh, the most important thing they'll get is not my contacts or anything. They'll get my notes section because <laughs> it is full of more than 1500 plus notes. And each notes is like very detailed. So the the thing which i was uh, referring to is i quit all right there is something which i have written i quit uh it takes a lot of courage to say those words it takes even more to go through with it quitting so often gets a bad rap as if quitting always equals failure mm -hmm. now the reason why i'm sharing all these things is people think that they have to have the perfect work-life balance in the initial stage people think that they have to uh, just sit on the computer and just work their internet business all the time in the initial stage people think that they don't have to go offline and can build a business and personal brand in the initial stage people think that if they don't have money they cannot grow the business all these are the blocks to roadmap of building a solid powerful personal brand in next five to ten years people compare people people try to compare my 32 chapter right 32 because i'm a i'm, I'm soon going to be 32 in the month of march so I call that the 32nd chapter of my journey of my life with okay. their 19 years so, of chapter <laughs> or, or, so this is with respect to youngsters or in the mid thirties, people who might be, let's say 38, all right, let's call 38 people compare their six months of chapter with my nine years of chapter, Hundred percent. you know, that's the thing. So when you're just getting started, I have given this example as well over here. I'll just read that out and it will give so often context over here to people. That is, I had to quit waking up early morning, even though I knew that it's good to do that. Because 11 years ago, in 2010, I took a drop from college and I had to go to call center job where I was into night shifts. Those night shifts were 3.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 3.30 a.m. at times. Those were the graveyard shifts. Now, how can I wake up early at 5 a.m. and work? And when I can't sleep the entire night, it's practically impossible. Even though I know that 5 a.m. club, Robin Sharma has written this book, which is fantasy and all those things. I was not able to do that. So like, I won't read the entire thing, but I, all I'm trying to say is you have to be practical enough True. in your life, in the current scenario. And then don't just blindly listen to somebody that it won't. It is, it, it is just like people, somebody, because I come from that Amway and Herbalife background where I went into network marketing just to taste because I'm self-aware that I wanted to be a communicator in the long run. Mm -hmm. So I was just making networks. I was just building networks over there. And in that as well, people used to say that you have to come in suited and booted. I'm like, no, fuck that. 
i won't come in that i am not comfortable even in my full sleeve jackets i do this you will never ever see me in full sleeves because that is not a comfortable position to me people used to tell me that if you have tattoos you won't be successful in the corporate world i'm like fuck you i'll change the paradigm give me 10 years now i have four tattoos and people don't care about that all these things are the roadblock in the initial stage because what they restrict themselves is with some kind of paradigms which mm-hmm. their surroundings or those traditional concepts tell them correct that only if you do this you will be successful absolutely and that's what the conditioning bring into picture right so that yeah. all of us have grown up in a in a unique environment unique behavioral pattern and unique beliefs with which we have grown up yes and that's and, what is bringing and to, top, and to top this up you mentioned the self awareness game as well oh, yeah. like i have been self auditing myself every single day all right i do the six phase meditation by vishen lakhani of mindvalley.com so mm-hmm. inside that there are phases and in those phases i try to self audit myself for 3 minutes before i start the meditation and after i end the meditation so that self audit part is always me going into my past and looking backwards in my life that what i was good at all right i always want to to be like <coughs> i'll tell you my self awareness how i am self aware and how i am patient the combination of self awareness and patient i used to be choreographer in my school days mm-hmm. all right i have not learned dancing all i have done is watching t- television at that point in time there was no youtube at that point in time when i was in 5th 6th standard all right there was television so i used to watch in 2000 in the year 2000 kahona pyare came into picture all right it was released in 2000 and i was probably that time i was in 5th standard i don't know what happened to me i have never seen something like dancing i don't even know the word that dancing aisa bhi hota hai all we used to see is govinda dancing at that point in time <laughs> so when i'm seeing rithik roshan in this complete different form other than michael jackson which we used to see true we are seeing rithik roshan all of a sudden something happened to me some inner soul told me that pratik let's try this and before going to school every single day i used to dance by just watching that i used to learn that that's how i've trained myself in l- this process so once again self awareness when i'm self auditing what i'm seeing is okay fine i was learning and applying dancing every single day but i was not still sharing mm-hmm. the sharing part came after 10 15 20 years long Agreed. and still i'm not sharing that completely as some kind of dancing coach or choreographer what i see as a self awareness game plus patience game for my dancing thing in my life which is macro life macro niche is maybe 10 years down the line when my kids would if they love to do dancing and if they are on some reality shows like jalak dikhla ja and india's best dancer i would be that parent who would fulfill the dream of dancing when my kid would be dancing on the floor and some judge would tell me that aap unke papa ho aapko dancing aata hai i would be saying yes that was one of my dreams which i couldn't fulfill but i would love to dance right now for 5 minutes and that would be my biggest moment wonderful that's how self aware i am with all the patience i have for anything and everything which i do wonderful thank you very much for bringing it i think it it, it is also combined with the visualization that you have and you keep visualizing and probably expressing that in the social media as well that you are just dreaming about your beautiful wife and a home and yes. everything yes. so what is that visualization for you to let's say talk about a digital prati going 5 years down the line or 10 years down the line with the kind of uh, uh following that you are going or with the kind of work that you are doing where this do you see the, yourself this is the only thing which i don't visualize wonderful all i visualize <laughs> all i i am i'm very honest i swear on my parents i don't visualize where digital pratik is 5 years or 10 years down the line all i visualize all right all i visualize is 3 years down the line or 5 years down the line i am comfortably living with my parents mm-hmm. with my amazingly beautiful wife whenever she comes with lovely little children and i have a decent enough time to spend with them even though i would be 10x times more busy than what i am right now mm-hmm. i used to dream like this 5 years ago as well out of which something is now happening mm-hmm. i was not able to take lunches and dinner with my parents from 2007 when i entered the college because i was in a different city yeah from 2007 till 2018 i never took lunch and dinner with my parents 
because of my job or because of my studies. Eleven long years, right? From 2018, now I, I I became a little bit capable because my last job of 2018 was product manager at an institute, right? So I had decent money at that point in time, saved money, saved money. Plus I was side hustling, and I wanted to go full fledgedly on digital pratik from June 2018. So mm-hmm. I brought back my parents with me, right? And since then I am taking breakfast, I mean lunch and dinner, but that too not consistently. That consistency came into my life post lockdown. Okay. I decided to wake up early morning. So I am waking up at four thirty or five o'clock from now, from past six months. only 6 months other than that i was raat ka raja i used to work for a whole night there was no work life schedule based on my parents schedule true now i have made sure that uh, in the noon 12 to 2 pm 2 hours with my parents nothing else i leave this place of my work i go to my home which is a travel of 30 minutes 20 30 minutes i go there i take lunch spend time with my parents they are old and then i come back once again at 2 o'clock my day once again starts but this is a regime which i am now following that at least one meal with my parents now this will once again change i will schedule my time accordingly when i'll get married when i'll have kids right so that's the thing i mean yeah <laughs> the so lot that is where I, that that's where i always tell people different. yeah that i mean i i'm i'm no different i i always tell people that i'm just an ordinary guy trying to do extraordinary things in my own way not Absolutely. other people's way all right Absolutely. i just want to live my every second extraordinary way where i'm trying to deliver value and delivering value doesn't come when you have money no 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 i was delivering value when i didn't have money as well but not necessarily digital platforms i used to help okay. my nri friends my friends used to be like with cars and all i used to be with cycles but i used to give my time to them 100% now let's talk about the the digital pratik as a brand per se right and you are uh, conceptualizing this is called the context marketing contextual marketing content marketing what that exactly means for a person who wants to build a brand so let's suppose contextual marketing if i say let's suppose you are meeting a girl uh, in a bar mm-hmm. right uh the way you will approach that girl would totally depend on the way she is dressed the place where you are right now so mm-hmm. probably you will be a little more casual in approaching her but the same girl if you see in gagra choli on a navratri in gujarat the way you will approach her would completely be different understood all you want to do is maybe date her the objective is same branding but the way you are approaching that same audience is different why because of two different platforms one is bar and second is maybe a garba mm-hmm. true same way all the digital platforms if you are posting something on instagram it has to be contextual to that platform agree and to the audience which is consuming your content on instagram versus if you try to put out the same piece of content on twitter linkedin everywhere so what i generally practice for my brand and i do that same thing for my clients i hire team so let's say this particular post today we posted this particular post mm-hmm. it's just a sign board right so i got this idea obviously from gary vinochuk's posts i keep on seeing her his post and then i thought okay fine while i was traveling i called my content team and i told him one of the guys i told him that because you are good at photoshop uh let's let's do this you keep on listening to my podcast or my videos because i would be saying so many things you pick up the things which i'm saying as quotes so all the quotes which are now happening are from the videos or podcast which i'm doing and then we are contextualizing that another way of contextualizing that is this content is created by my team but then the caption which i'm writing is by me mm mm-hmm. and on that caption what i'm writing is dp quote board on your way while you are driving through your instagram feed now that caption instantly was in my head when i saw this post why because this is kind of a sign board on the road absolutely and yeah. the same thing which i did on linkedin today was different linkedin reminder for you 
it is contextual right so that's what i i i, I mean when i say contextual content marketing same yes. way this is organic posting when we talk about the inorganic part if the inorganic part is there and if you're trying to sell let's say if you're trying to sell this mouse all right apple mouse if i'm selling this apple mouse then my advertisement copy for 18 to 24 age bracket would be a little bit different than i targeting 35 to 45. Okay. i agree product is same but the language would be different the way i would be communicating would be different Absolutely. And that, that brings me to the another question, which, which I feel is very important in the context that we are talking about it. You on the Instagram or for that matter, LinkedIn, you have a different audience set, maybe. Mm. Right. I just wanted to understand you as a digital Pratik, how would you approach a person with a 18 to 24, who is a youngster, just starting off the career, a person who is in kind of already doing a job and maybe less than 35 and the one who is starting after 35, what advice would you give in terms of building their brand at that three different age group? I would just tell them that whatever knowledge, all right, fine. Let me contextualize that as well. 18 to 24, let's pick up 18 to 24. All mm -hmm. I would tell them is please don't focus on growing the number of followers, likes, comments, okay. and don't treat that as your brand growth. Okay. Today morning, I don't want to show all those things. Today morning, I was having a conversation with somebody. They are commenting on my post on my YouTube video of today. They are saying that my Instagram followers are not growing. So my gr brand growth is not happening. I'm like, your number of followers doesn't define your brand growth. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, then I don't have any brand growth because there are millions of people who have millions of followers. I don't have millions of followers on Instagram. True. All right. Rakesh Rana didn't approach me based on my number of followers. 100%. So 18 to 24, if they are there, my honest advice is don't look into the number of followers game, likes, comments, views game while you're posting content, which is your talent in the pieces of video, audio, text, image, and don't treat that as your brand growth. That is one. Number two, if we talk about the middle age, let's say the professionals who are doing job, decent job, 26 to maybe let's say 35. All right. If we talk about them, all I would say is try to incorporate two hours a day on LinkedIn only. Mm -hmm. Don't try to post anything. Go on LinkedIn, go on the search bar every single day. Now this will be applying to everyone, but I'm contextualizing just for 26 to 35 because this would be the thing which they would be easily doing. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is go on LinkedIn, go on search box, search anything with respect to your own thing. So let's say if you are a builder, so, or let's say you are a real estate broker right now doing a real estate agent job, search for real estate on the LinkedIn and then go into people or posts. Mm. Let's assume that Rakesh Rana is real estate broker and you saw him go into him, go into see all activity of Rakesh Rana and see what Rakesh Rana was doing on LinkedIn right now. Try to engage on any of the comments or posts. That's how you build connections. That's how you build network and you start growing your personal brand as well with the, with the words you will type over there. True. Right. Not, I mean, you cannot build a personal brand if you're not good at communicating period and mm -hmm. story. So you have to be good in that, uh, that thing for sure. That is still 35 and above 35. All I would say is you guys already know the importance of patience. All right. All you have to do is because you are above 35, most of the cases, maybe you will have something in your savings account. So try to do advertisements on your experiences, which you will put on your content. I mean, Rakesh Rana would definitely have more experience than a 19 year old kid. 100%. And if that is in the form of a video, and then if you deploy some ads on that, it will definitely help you impact the world and grow a business as well. True. Wonderfully right. say and all of these things, all, all of these things, all of these things revolve around that concept of Gary V document over create. And the thing which I have been doing since ages now learn, apply, share. True. But it comes in various different forms and shape because 19 year old kid won't have that much money unless he's or he or she is a trust fund baby. 
<laughs> he won't have that much money of his own or her own as compared to some old dude of 55 years because he might have been saving money over these years and compound interest aaya hoga mutual funds real estate i don't know where the money might have come right so okay. that's and and how do you see the the personal branding with respect to the okay not not the personal branding per se let me put it in the digital branding right how do you see the digital branding different from a personal branding that a person is trying to build his own or a business is trying to build his because in the lockdown as we see that a lot of businesses went down mm. so a lot of businesses had cut cut back on the cost and one of the thing they cut back because there are no market available they are not even trying to look at from the lateral perspective or out of box kind of thing but they have cut back on their branding span per se so how do you see that what advice would you give to them the advice which i'll give to them is people still have money it's just that they are pretending they don't have money because if they want to run the business they have to any which way do branding mm-hmm. but the thing which they i mean today morning i was having this uh, call with one of the prospects they have a decent budget lakhs of rupees per month budget in branding and marketing ads the question they were asking me is should we go ahead with the billboard advertisements mm-hmm. i'm like that means you have money but you're going on the wrong path and then you will lose money and then you will say because of corona we don't have money it's not because of corona it's because of the wrong strategy which they are trying to follow so if you want to do branding you have to do proper youtube pre roll ads proper instagram story swipe up ads depending upon what kind of product you have all right true proper youtube pre roll ads in the sense let's say if you are if if all right let's say if you are somebody who is selling kaju all right or or nuts or uh, healthy food healthy snacks you are a company manufacturing healthy snacks the advertisements and branding which you should be doing is on every single youtube channel which are with respect to health and fitness 100% and now contextual content marketing let's say we'll we'll name this um, uh, any channel of uh, gorav taneja right gorav taneja who is one of the finest vloggers of india he has his fitness muscle tv channel so if i am doing an ad on that particular channel as a skippable ad my ad copy would start like this my video ad would start like this hey before watching this gorav taneja's fit muscle tv video please give me 15 seconds i have this brand new nut which is cost effective and it is the cheapest in the market yet the best in the quality if you wish you know more just download the brochure click the link below and now back to your gorav taneja's video wonderful nobody is going to put this effort why because to create contextual advertisements like this they'll have to create 100 unique pieces of content and then they will think okay fine this is not our piece of cake let's just do billboard ads because wahan par ek graphic banana hai shape dena hai 1 lakh rupaye ek mahine ka dena hai but then you are not tracking the data you don't know where the traffic is coming from you just sit and wait and watch that who is going to call you and then when they call they uh, you ask that hey did you see my billboard ads what is the guarantee they will say yes and no or let's assume that even if they say yes what is the guarantee they are saying truth <laughs> how will you scale the business if you are doing billboard ads tell me one thing there is no way that's where branding see any which way you have to do branding i understand that corona ki wajah se business gaya there are a lot of losses which has happened but then if you still want to grow business you have to figure out some growth hacking you have to figure out you have to cut your costs but you cannot completely shut down 100% 100% now let me probably bring it just to uh uh give uh, uh i think context to this entire thing and i i understand that we are also running out of your time that you have allocated for this interview now help me understand that now that the companies are looking from the branding from the digital media perspective a lot of them have now become aware of it so should they actually go with the personal branding should they go with the business branding is one of the questions that people always come up with and a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs especially uh, in the age where they have got the experience on their side they do are very much hesitant in building their personal branding like i said i'll give you i'll save you time on this yeah. i'll give you a practical example the reason being is i i have to jump off this call like uh, quickly because of lack of time i have to get on another call yeah 
in April, May, June, July, right? Mm-hmm. Four or five months. My friend, FMCG entrepreneur Raj Shamani, he was just trying to sell sanitizers and disinfectant spray because he's already an FMCG entrepreneur. He has a Shamani Industries company who is into FMCG. They are a dishwash gel company. They wanted to jump into this. Uh, we were having a word. I was one of the digital partners for him. Uh, we were strategizing everything day in and day out, building websites, promoting that here and there. We didn't do personal branding in that. All we used was Shamani Industries name. The name of the disinfectant sanitizer was insurance with blue ticks because the concept of blue ticks two blue ticks was when you get a message on WhatsApp and if it is blue tick, it means that somebody has received received. So that was the concept. You are safe. You are insured if you are using this insurance. So we came up with that. It was not Raj Shamani's face who was selling that. Second, for all the corporate brands, try to go into influencer marketing. If you're not comfortable on camera, if you're not a person, if you're not that personal branding guy, or the if you don't want to be the front face of your corporate brand, go into influencer marketing. That is one of the underpriced attention right now. That is what we did for insurance as well. We contacted all our influencer friends. We gave away our insurance disinfectant spray bottles to all them at times in bulk. And that's it. On top of that, if you're a corporate brand, I'm sure you will have some kind of network as well. 100%. If you're a businessman, you need to have network as well. So if you have network, you can go offline as well and talk to some shops, depending upon your product, obviously. So what Raj did was he also contacted distributors for bulk orders. Mm -hmm. So like it's a mix of plenty of things. It is not necessary that you have to be a person... I mean, for God's sake, Facebook was built not because Mark Zuckerberg's face was sexy or handsome. <laughs> True. And at the same point in time, Tesla is there because Elon Musk built his personal brand. Absolutely. We have two extreme points. Ratan Tata, you name everyone. Dhirubhai Ambani, Mukesh Ambani, Anil Ambani. Um, any which way, Anil Ambani is down now. But you see where I'm going? It is not necessary. But in this 2021 digital age, if you have personal branding and human face, it will be an additional advantage, but it is not mandatory. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Pratik. I think I I, I would just uh, uh, put my uh, interview to Anne and just wanted to say a very, very thank you and really grateful for you being in on the show. I know there are a lot of things which you can talk. And uh, look forward to see you in another Raw Wisdom episodes very, uh, very soon so that we can touch upon some topics which are more relevant in the current times as well. So I just want to say thank you very much and uh, God bless and uh, let's grow Digital Pratik and go with that. Let's let's go together for all the people who are watching this. I don't know which shape or form this would be consumed by people on the planet Earth on Internet. Uh, I just wish you an amazing 2021 and upcoming years. Just be blessed. Be consistent, be patient, and no matter what, never ever give up. Life is a struggle. I just remember this Amitabh Bachchan's video. Life is a struggle. As long as you accept that earlier to accept, it is better for your life. And if something is according, uh, something is working according to your wish, it is good. If it is not, it is even better because then it is happening some divine force and it will never think bad about you. Right? So just have faith, keep going, and take care. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for much. having me. Thank you very much, Prati. All right. All right, viewers, thank you very much for being with us on this wonderful show, Ara Wisdom. And as a part of a parting gift, I wanted to announce with each one of you that we want to give away something very, very useful to build your 2021. And this 2021 has actually a ray of hope for many people who have seen the worst of time in 2020. And I want to just give away that one part of Ray of Hope. That is, how do you actually set your goals in 2021? Which areas? How do you how do you uh, put the actions around that? And how do you make that goals into reality? And that is one thing which I have captured in a digital form. And I want to give it away to the three lucky people 
all you need to do in this is a very simple three steps go to my youtube channel just subscribe to it put a bell alert and that's about it and put the comment below this video of digital pratik interview that you have watched this video and these are my three takeaways from the video and we will choose the people out of this so look forward to see you in another episode of raw wisdom very very soon thank you very much stay tuned because we are bringing in one another personality in the digital space in the entrepreneurship and somebody who you will resonate so thank you very much